Good morning students. I, Varsha Vaishali, your teacher for today, welcome you all to this another interesting chapter which we are going to learn today from your book Beehive. This is a very sensitive and a very important poem of your book. The poem which we are going to read is On Killing a Tree by Jeev Patel. But before we start the poem, I want to tell you this poem which the poet Mr. Jeev Patel has written is rather an eye-opening poem for all of us. That's because the way we are heading towards a modern civilized world with this advancement in the technology, with the development in all our civilization, we are heading very very rapidly towards a modern advanced world. Along with this advancements come many changes. Let it be urbanization, let it be modernization. But along with these come a very important change that is deforestation. It's a very important term because it is related to our lives. Deforestation occurs for the betterment of the civilization for the betterment of the society but it is happening at such a fast rate that our lives are also being affected through it if i talk about the poet jeev patel he is a very sensitive poet and he along with many other poets have subscribed themselves to the green movement which helps to prevent our green community. They felt it the need of the hour because the way things are changing, the time will come very soon that we all will perish along with our developments and advancements if we do not preserve the greenery within us. Hence is the need of saving the green trees. This poem particularly emphasizes on the fact that the way we destroy a tree, we think it is very easy, it's very simple, but the poet has emphasized that if you are thinking that only by chopping or cutting or by hitting a tree, if you are destroying a life, no, it is not that easy. It takes a lot of efforts, it's a painstaking work to destroy a life because the life of a tree is as worthy and important as a life of the human being. So now let us come to this beautiful poem on killing a tree. Before I start explaining you the poem, I would like to recite this poem to you which will echo deep in your ears as well as heart and will lead you towards another world. So let us come to this exciting, interesting poem recitation. Okay, The poem here it goes like this, On Killing a Tree. It takes much time to kill a tree. Not a simple jab of the knife will do it. It has grown slowly, consuming the earth, rising out of it feeding upon its crust, absorbing years of sunlight, air, water, and out of its leprous height, sprouting leaves. So hack and chop, but this alone won't do it. Not so much pain will do it. The bleeding bark will heal. And from close to the ground will rise curled green twigs miniature boughs, which if unchecked will expand again to former size. No, the root is to be pulled out, out of the anchoring earth. It is to be roped, tied and pulled out, snapped out or pulled out entirely. Out from the earth cave, and the strength of the tree exposed, the source white 
and wet, the most sensitive hidden for years inside the earth. Then the matter of scorching and choking in sun and air, browning, hardening, twisting, withering, and then it is done. The poem is written by Jeev Patel. So you can already feel the intensity of the words the poet has tried to convey. Now we will understand the poem with the stanzas. So here we start with the first stanza. As you can see, the stanza starts with, it takes much time to kill a tree. Not a simple jab of the knife will do it. Here the poet emphasizes on the fact that if you have decided that you are going to kill a tree, don't take it as a simple and easy job because it is not that easy as you think it to be. He says not a simple jab of the knife. Students, jab means a sudden rough blow, one strike, that's it. So if you feel that your work is going to be over, the tree is going to be killed just with a simple rough blow, it's not done, it's not easy. It has grown slowly consuming the earth. Now the poet also explains why is it not so easy. It is not so easy because the plant which you see now has not grown within a second, has not grown just in a day. It has taken so many years. It has grown slowly consuming the earth. It has grown from the soil. It has absorbed, consuming means absorbing the earth. It has grown slowly from the earth. It has absorbed all the vital, eminent, rich nutrients from the soil. And it has grown to such a huge giant tree. Rising out of it, rising out of the soil. Feeding upon its crust, it got all its food. Feeding means it got its food. From where? From the soil. Crust is the surface of the soil. Absorbing years of sunlight, air, water. Not only the food students, it has also received sunlight, air, water all throughout these years. Do you think it was just for a second? It was just for a moment? Or it was just for a day? Not at all. It was all for so many years. It's such a painstaking process. It's such a time consuming process for a tree to grow from a tiny sapling, from a seed you can say, to become what it is now. So it has taken so many years for the tree to absorb all the nutrients, to absorb all the sunlight, air and water from the surroundings and grow into such a strong tree. And out of its leprous hide, it's very important here, we are going to understand about the leprous hide. Hide means the bark of the tree and leprous. Leprous is related to the disease leprosy. In this phrase, the poet wants to say the hide means the bark, the trunk of the tree. The bark of the tree turns as if it is of a skin of the leprosy patient. So it has been compared with the skin of a leprosy patient. When a person gets leprosy, leprosy is a disease. So in this disease, the skin of the patient gets patchy, gets discolored and it is very irregular and scaly. So the hide of the tree has been compared with the skin of a patient of a leprosy. So it is known as leprous hide. So the poet wants to say the leaves sprout. Sprouting means growing. The leaves grow from the hide of the tree, the bark of the tree, which looks discolored, patchy, irregular and scaly. So again the poet wants to emphasize upon the fact that a simple jab, a simple rough sudden blow is not going to destroy the life of the tree completely. 
because the tree has taken so many years, so many painstaking, difficult, hard years to grow from the earth by absorbing all its rich and vital nutrients, absorbing so many years of sunlight, air and water and from the discolored skin of the tree grows the leaves. So this is all explained in the first stanza. Now students, let us move towards the next stanza. So here is the next stanza. So hack and chop, but this alone won't do it. The poet wants to tell you that hack and chop. Children, hack means cutting roughly something with heavy blows. So you cut again and again by striking it hard. So that is called hack. And chop means you could have seen your uh, mother chopping the vegetables into small, small pieces. So that is called hacking and chopping. So the poet wants to say that if you want to cut a tree by roughly striking with so many blows by hacking and chopping, it's not going to help you. It's not going to destroy the life of the tree completely. So hack and chop. But this alone won't do it. Not so much pain will do it. You may do a lot of efforts by hacking and chopping continuously. But that is not going to help you in any way. That is not going to kill a tree in any way. That is what the poet wants to emphasize. The bleeding bark will heal. And from close to the ground will rise curled green twigs. The bleeding bark will heal. What does the poet want to say here with the help of bleeding bark? You know, when a human being, when any person is hurt, there is bleeding. Bleeding means blood oozes out of our skin, blood comes out from our body. So the same way trees also have blood, not exactly blood of red color, they have the sap. So when you cut a tree, you will observe liquid, you can say sap will come out. So the poet has compared that sap with the blood of a human being. So it wants to say that when you hit a human being, when you hit a person as he bleeds, as blood comes out from his body, in a similar way, when you hit a tree, similarly, the trees also bleed. The trees bleed not with the red color blood, but they bleed with the sap. They also have that sap. So the bleeding bark will heal. So the poet wants to say, if you hit it, if you strike it, if you chop it, no matter, it will be hurt. But again, it will get healed. That means it will conceal its pain and again it will grow. It will again get healed. The wound will get healed, the wound will get recovered, it will get healed and again from close to the ground will rise curled green twigs. So as a tree is born with the help of the branches, small small branches are known as twigs, curled, they are curly, they grow from here and there. So again the bark which you have hurt, which was hurt by your strikes, by your hacking and chopping, it will recover from its wound, it will again uh, be alright and again there will be the growth of the twigs, the branches which will again grow. Miniature boughs, miniature means very very tiny, very very small, boughs means the branch of the tree. So miniature boughs again very very tiny, very very small branches of the tree will grow up which if unchecked will expand again to form a size. And if these growths are not checked, if they are not controlled, they are going to expand, they are going to again regrow and are going to again come to their former size, reappear into their previous size which already they were in. So the poet again wants to emphasize that the tree has its own natural process of healing. Tree has its own natural way of recovering from its wound which the man gives from time to time. 
so no matter you may hack it you may chop it you may hit it hard but it is not going to destroy the life of a tree completely it is not that simple it is not that easy because nature has created its own way for the tree to heal to recover from the pain which the human beings generally give so here is the message of the second stanza i do hope that you are trying to understand the deep message of the poet through the deep lines of this poem so it's not a simple it's not an easy process easy way to destroy the life of the tree completely okay so next we have the stanza which we are going to understand now let us move to the explanation of the next stanza the next part of the poem no there is an absolute negative to all your thoughts that if you think it is being so easy it is being so simple to just kill a tree the poet wants to clarify your query the poet wants to clarify you that no it's not done the tree is not yet killed you have just been able to hit the tree you have just been able to hurt the tree in some way but the life is still there the life in the tree is still there so now the poet wants to say the root is to be pulled out now students in this stanza the poet wants us to know the real process the steps for killing a tree for destroying the life of the tree completely now he has explained it through the stanza the root is to be pulled out he says if you want to kill a tree then the real life of the tree is in its roots so the root has to be uprooted the root has to be pulled out from the soil out of the anchoring earth anchoring here which means which is fixed firmly to the soil you know the roots uh, expand themselves they spread everywhere in the ground and they make the tree stand firmly so here is what the poet wants to say if you really want to kill the tree then you have to pull out the root from the earth from the anchoring earth from the earth where the roots of the tree have been fixed firmly so how it has to be uprooted is it that easy he again explains it how you are going to take out the root from such firm tight clutches of the earth it is to be roped tied and pulled out snapped out so now the poet wants to say if you really want to destroy the life of the tree then you have to tie the tree with a strong rope you have to tie it very strongly you have to rope it you have to tie it and then you have to put all your efforts you have to put all your force and pull it very hard snapped out snapped out is again chopping snapped out means chopped out so you have to pull with your complete strength with all your physical strength you do have and then you have to uproot the tree from the earth the tree should be out from the earth entirely or pulled out entirely out from the earth cave here the poet wants to say the earth cave the earth cave where it has made the earth its shelter its cave and the roots are emerged very deeply within the earth's cave from that shelter from that cave from that house of the earth you have to pull the roots of the tree completely entirely and the strength of the tree exposed and then you will find the real strength the real power of the tree will be exposed to you will be displayed to you where is the real strength of the tree the poet wants to say the real strength the real power of the tree is in its roots the source from where the tree has grown 
from a tiny seed from a sapling to such a giant huge tree the source was its roots white and wet you will find the roots of the trees are white and a little wet damp you can say and the most sensitive hidden for years inside the earth and they have been in this earth they are the most sensitive part very important part which are hidden inside the earth since many many years they are there and they give the trunk of the tree all the essential vital nutrients which are required you would have learnt it in your science books that the roots it conducts all the essential nutrients through the branches through the trunk of the tree so it is the most important it is the most sensitive part of the tree which is not visible to all of us it is always hidden and it is there since many many years so here students the poet has tried to explain the process of killing a tree that it is not that simple as you think but it takes all your strength to take out the roots of the trees from its earth cave from its house from its shelter where it has completely engrossed itself and has been staying since so many years so then when you pull out the roots from the earth then there is the death of a tree because it is no more inside the earth the roots are out and the tree dies now let us move to the last stanza of the poem which is the most important part of the poem then the matter of scorching and choking in sun and air so after you have uprooted the tree completely then starts the real process the destruction of the tree of scorching and choking with the words scorching and choking the poet wants to say the process of drying up of the tree you see after the death of a person the body if it is kept on the surface on the soil then it gets decomposed slowly the same happens with the tree the poet is trying to compare the life of the human being with the life of the tree so as a human being is dead and after he is dead the whole decomposition process occurs similarly when a tree is uprooted the same process goes along with the tree of scorching and choking here the trees are dried up after being uprooted scorching and choking is drying up in sun and air with the hot rays of the sun it gets completely destroyed it gets dried up and with the air it gets brown in color it gets harder and harder twisting withering and then it is done twisting the whole tree the branches and all they get twisted and curled because of the effect of the harsh rays of the sun and the air and then the journey of the tree is all over so that's what is the story of a tree it takes so many innumerable years for a tree to grow up from a tiny sapling to a huge giant tree but when it dies the journey gets over immediately the poet wants to emphasize upon this message that we are not killing a tree but we are killing the lives for ourselves because these trees will be there forever and ever and will be helping our future generations in surviving in this polluted modernized advanced artificial world if we are not going to take care of this beautiful angels on earth the trees then we are going to suffer a lot because of our carelessness our negligence and our selfishness so students there is a deep message hidden within this poem which all of us have to feel and understand deeply that trees are our best friends all of you know it very clearly we are going through a very tough phase now the pandemic and that is not just because of a simple meager virus it is also because of the nature the nature which is being destroyed completely so the natural uh, recovery 
of us is not that strong. We are not being able to recover so quickly because the nature is not there with us. The nature is not helping us to recover. If we would have taken care of the nature, then the nature would have also taken care of us in a positive way. So students, it's high time that we realize this truth. This is a bitter truth actually and we have to realize it at the earliest that we have to save our nature. We have to take care of the trees and instead of uprooting, instead of killing these trees, we have to plant more and more trees for ourselves, for our future generations to live a happy, peaceful life. So here we come to the end of the poem. Next, we will discuss about the literary devices present in the poem. Okay. So, if we observe the poem completely, then you will find out the rhyming scheme. Now, can you tell me, do you find an exact rhyming scheme of a poem, of this poem particularly? Do we find a rhyming scheme? If you observe the poem carefully, we do not have any particular rhyming scheme. You have to see the last word of the lines. So we do not find any sync, any rhyming amongst all these lines. So the poem doesn't have a particular rhyming scheme. It is a free verse. It is a free verse. Free verse is a poem where there is no rhyming scheme present. Okay. So this poem doesn't have a particular rhyming scheme. Now let us talk about another literary device. The next literary device which we find in this poem is enjabment. E-N-J-A-M-B-M-E-N-T. Enjabment. Now enjabment is the continuity of the poem continuously in all the consecutive lines without any punctuation. If you observe the lines of the poem, let it be the first stanza. So it starts with it takes much time to kill a tree. Then again in the next line, it doesn't end there. It continues again with this another line, we'll do it. So again another line starts there. It has grown slowly consuming the earth, rising out of it, feeding. So it goes on continuously and continuously. So that is called an enjabment where the lines of the poem continue without any stopping without any punctuation mark. So that continues. So we will find enjabment here in the first stanza. In the next stanza also you have it. Uh, so in all the stanzas there are almost the evident examples of enjabment. Now let us move on to the next literary device. Metaphor. You know metaphor is a comparison which is a indirect comparison where words as or like not used. If you use like or as to compare then it becomes a simile but here we are not using the words as or like so it becomes a metaphor so here the example of metaphor is leprous height where the skin of the tree has been compared with the skin of a patient of a leprosy it is an indirect comparison here in the poem you will not find it anywhere it is mentioned but it is an indirect comparison made that the bark, the skin of the tree is similar to the skin of the leprosy patient which is patchy and discolored. So that is the example of metaphor. We have another example of metaphor also in the poem that is the bleeding bark. As the human beings bleed, similarly the trees also bleed. So when the human beings bleed, there is blood on their skin. So here the bleeding bark is compared with the bleeding skins of the human being. So this is also an example of a metaphor, right? Now let us move to another literary device. We have another literary device, alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sounds consecutively nearby in any part of the poem. So here we have bleeding bark, b, b sound, you can see that, b, b, the sound b, b has been repeated with the help of bleeding bark. So this is an example of alliteration, right? We have another example of alliteration also, 
if you come to the third stanza white and wet so here the consonant sound w w has been repeated and that is an example of alliteration when the consecutive uh, repetition is there of the consonant sounds that is known as alliteration we have seen that bleeding bark b b white and wet that is w w okay now let us move to another literary device which we find in this poem so that is repetition now repetition is the repetition of some words or phrases which have been repeated throughout the poem to emphasize a particular part in the poem so here in this poem you will find pulled out if we go towards the third stanza you can see pulled out again the root is to be pulled out it is to be roped tied and pulled out and again and pulled out snapped out or pulled out entirely so the word pulled out has been repeated thrice in the poem so that's an example of repetition so here we have covered all the literary devices in the poem and i do believe that you have understood it very well how to use these literary devices in the poem properly so now i do feel that you will recite the poems yourself and will try to understand the deep hidden message of the poem which the poet wants to convey to all of us and will imply it and inculcate in your lives properly and effectively i know you have understood the poem very well so it will be quite easy for all of you to answer the questions quickly isn't it so let us move to the question answer part here is the question for you can a simple jab of the knife kill a tree why not yes i know you all answered it correctly yes the answer is no a simple jab of a knife cannot kill a tree because it takes many years for a tree to grow and rise out of the earth and moreover only a chop cannot kill it because it will slowly rise again and grow to its original size okay so let us move to the next question how has the tree grown to its full size list the words suggestive of its life and activity let me repeat the question once more how has the tree grown to its full size and list the words suggestive of its life and activity yes you people are absolutely smart enough to answer this yes you are correct the answer is the unchecked growth of the tree has led it mature to its full size it has consumed the earth and rose above it by absorbing years of sunlight air and water from its crust and the words which are suggestive of its life and activity are grown consuming rising feeding absorbing sprouting pain bleeding heal and expand okay so let us move to the next question the next question is what is the meaning of bleeding bark and what makes it bleed i repeat the question what is the meaning of bleeding bark and what makes it bleed yes i knew you would be able to answer this yes bleeding bark refers to the area on the tree trunk where it has been hit with the axe and it bleeds because the wood cutter has wounded the tree by cutting and chopping it so it's the same way as a human being feels so this is the answer okay let us move to the next question the poet says no in the beginning of the third stanza what does he mean by this i repeat the question the poet says no in the beginning of the third stanza what does he mean by this yes you are absolutely right in the beginning of the third stanza the poet has said no to lay emphasis on the fact that mere chopping of the tree would not kill it the tree would grow again and retain its original size 
So it's not possible to kill a tree so easily, isn't it? Let us move to the next question. The next question is, what is the meaning of anchoring earth and earth cave? I repeat the question, what is the meaning of anchoring earth and earth cave? Now, could you answer it? Yes, I knew you could do it. So here is the answer for you. Anchoring earth refers to the earth under which the roots of a tree are held firmly, thereby providing strength and nourishment to it. Okay? And earth cave refers to the earth. The poet calls it so because the roots which are the most sensitive part of the tree, they stay hidden securely and safely under the earth. Okay? So, let us move to the next question. What does he mean by the strength of the tree exposed? I repeat the question once more. What does he mean by the strength of the tree exposed? Did you get it? Yes. Let me answer it. The strength of the tree lies in its roots which the poet asks to snap out in order to kill the tree. So the strength of the tree exposed, this phrase refers to the roots of the tree being exposed to sunlight and air. Okay. Now let us move to the next question. What finally kills the tree? Let me repeat the question. What finally kills the tree? Yes, you people are absolutely correct. The tree is finally killed when its roots are uprooted and it scorches and chokes in sunlight and air. This process leads to the browning, hardening, twisting and thereby weathering of the roots. So here we come to the end of the discussion of the question answer part. I do believe that you have really understood the chapter well and you will be able to use the message, the deep message of the poet in your lives in a positive way. Thank you. Keep smiling and keep enjoying your learning as well through the online sessions. Thank you and bye-bye.